here we are for typographic readability in theme design and development. Um, you are already seated, so we can go on. Well, thanks to uh, WordCamp Europe for having me here. I'm really excited to, to try to give this um, a bit of knowledge on typography that is in the middle between uh, the competencies of designers and developers. So I'll try to let you uh, communicate better, maybe. I don't know. I'll try. Uh, if you feel like uh, tweeting or you, you know already the um, uh, hashtags. And, okay, I'll start with an abstract, the abstract of this talk. Actually, I'm assuming that you already read this piece of text since you're here, otherwise, I think, unless, unless you haven't uh, took the wrong room, <laughs> here we are. So, uh, this is not a proper way to style uh, a piece of text in order to be read. It, to be read. Maybe in a light mode with a different font, a bit more readable. That's Moolish, the one that is used by the, the WordCamp Europe communication. It's a bit better. You see the difference. This is too uh, crowded, uh, too narrow, and uh, in this sort of dark mode. And this is a light mode. It's not so much light, it's not poor white at the background. Um, the, the text is a bit spaced uh, vertically, um, but maybe I still not let you read the content, okay? Because you are not um, keen to read it. If I do something like taking the, the text and I split it in different uh, paragraphs, and I'll start to differentiate a bit and maybe trying to introduce some hierarchy, I have some more chances that you're going to read this. And of course, here I have your attention, for, for the moment at least, and um, yeah, you are motivated to read, whereas on, on the web, our users are not. They are in a hurry, they, they have things to do, other things, so they are not so patient with us. And without our um, with our um, way of styling text. So let's see. Uh, here is a presentation of me in dark mode, unlegible uh, dark mode. This is a bit <laughs> better in uh, light mode. The important thing to say is nice to meet you. And the other is that I'm quite um, I'm a, I'm a sort of web designer and developers, that's why I'm in that intersection. And I'm that because I've started to work with the web from the very beginning on the web. <laughs> it's so, um, I, I saw different uh, attitudes toward the web. And in the recent years, I've been um, really focused on uh, typography and web fonts, since the web fonts were um, possible to be installed uh, into the websites. Mm, there was a time in which that was not possible at all. The period that I call the font agnosticism, so the designer couldn't say, couldn't tell in which font the, their set of websites were um, uh, written, were read by the users because um, they c could only suggest uh, a type of font uh, to, to, to be used. Okay, another unlegible light mode, <laughs> it's not like that, uh, dark mode takeaways. Okay, I, uh, I'd like to start with accessibility because I think that accessibility requirements um, are a good starting point for readability. And we see the difference between two concepts that are uh, well described in the English language that are legibility and readability. Um, we'll start, we'll try to recognize the main factors that affect the reading, the reading process on digital devices in particular and what we can do so from that 
to, to, to improve that. And <laughs> we'll start recognize some um, characteristics of the web phones with regards to readability. Uh, and maybe some um, things also about the variable fonts and the, uh, how they can help fine tuning the text. Uh, just one word before that, I would like to ask you how many of you uh, know something about variable fonts? Okay. How many have been using them in production? Yes. Okay. Have an idea. Okay. Because there, um, it's very different <laughs> in the audiences on this uh, topic. Okay. Let's see. Factors that influence reading. I actually try to um, to have three sets, three groups of factors, and um, for convenience. <laughs> and I'll, um, I I would say that there are some common factors common to everybody. Some personal conditions different from uh, everybody is different, and uh, some typographic properties. Uh, there are factors that we could we can take advantage of. Among the common factors, uh, to name a few, I would say the distance of reading, the lighting, the reading support, uh, where what we are uh, reading on paper, on a screen, which kind of screen, and gone, and so on. The reading environment in which we are, uh, the mental concentration we have in that moment, the mood we have in that moment, and the text function, it depends what we are reading, is that a title, is that a menu, what, uh, what is it? So we see this is common factors that influence reading, more or less, and there are mm, many more, actually. Among the personal conditions, I would say there's age. Age is really important <laughs> with that regard because with age, we decrease um, our, um, our sight quite a lot uh, and quite progressively. <laughs> so that's important. That's a personal condition that uh, will um, sooner or later, <laughs> um, unfortunately, um, involve. Um, um, everybody will experience maybe. Then there's the proficiency in reading, I mean, and that depends on how much we, are, we have been reading things on, and also the language in which we read. The proficiency in, in a certain language will condition our reading, of course. The topic we are reading and the motivation we have uh, when we read. And some other personal conditions are, of course, um, linked to the visual impairments that we might have, or other um, cognitive divergences of various types, like dyslexia and some others, that can condition in very different ways the, the way of reading. And what about uh, typography? Okay, we have some properties that we can take advantage of, like the kind of typeface we are using. When I say typeface, I mean f fonts, that's for uh, developers, okay, or designers, they know that, maybe. Um, the font style, is it bold, is it light? The font size, very, 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 very important. Line length, very, 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 very important. Line spacing, important. Color contrast, very, very important. Uh, character spacing, important. Uh, character width, important. If we are dealing with uh, variable fonts, for example, that's a thing we can um, fine tune. And the rhythm. The rhythm um, is difficult to, un to, to see, but if you have um, quite an experience with typography, after a while you'll recognize the rhythm uh, among the letters. And so that's a, a thing that can um, influence reading quite a lot. Okay. Um, we'll have 
two playgrounds that we'll try to, to use. I prepared this code pen. Um, you can uh, go uh, to that place, uh, to that code pen, like with the, the URL. Uh, it's uh, bit.ly slash CSS minus readability. Uh, I see. Uh, I have a point, but that's no point there. Eh? Okay, <laughs> at the end <laughs> of the URL. So, in typography, points are very uh, uh, ending sentencing with points. It's important, but not with URLs. Uh, sorry for that. Or if you have, uh, or if you like to use also um, an iPhone or uh, sorry, a smartphone, you'll uh, you can use the QR code, but. I'll recommend you to use it in um, the horizontal uh, mode because uh, um, we, we don't have enough <laughs> um, room for, for the exercise. So that's not really optimized for vertical um, on mobile. Uh, too many things there. And if you are with Figma, you can go, but you can actually open any, any um, file with Figma uh, and uh, or you can use this one for as a starting point. I just put some um, paragraphs with different fonts and a few uh, characteristics that maybe you will see better. And um, if you just want to, to take uh, note of this, um, I go for the CSS playground for for a minute. Then we'll we'll play that later. Just to let let you uh, see, I have to. Sorry about that. Yes. yes. Okay, I stay here. Um, this area is made like this. I have a made a, a control area at at the on the left. And we can see or hide the CSS that is produced and see or hide the controls. Okay, that's our playground, very simple. The, uh, here we have three texts. One is in English, one is in Italian, because I am Italian, so I wanted to, I'm f I feel comfortable with that typography, that's why I'm, I've introduced that. And this, I put some Greek, because we are here, so we have three different uh, mood <laughs> also on the text to test. And here we have a lot of uh, CSS properties. I mean, I have made some controls that control some properties, such as, let's see, the font size, for example, it's quite, uh, we can um, change the font size and one thing that I tried to do, I tried, was to set the, the, the two, the minimum and the maximum, with something reasonable. And for example, I said, okay, font size won't be uh, smaller than uh, 0.6 of uh, the root font size. And uh, actually, I would uh, the maximum I would uh, before I put this uh, 2.5, but in this room it was really too small, so I had to uh, add extra um, measures. Like I, I said, okay, four maybe uh, in the rear part of the room they can see something there uh, if it's enough. I don't know because. Reading is very much conditioned by distance, so it's not the same to have the, to use this playground at this distance, distance 70 centimeters, I don't know, or uh, a lot of meters. Um, other things are, of course, the kind of uh, typeface we are using, and we'll talk about of this later on. Then the font weight. Font weight, uh, well, we generally use it 
at uh, 300, uh, what is it? No, 400 and 700, we have regular and bold with static fonts. With variable fonts, we have, if a variable font has uh, the weight axis, uh, we can uh, move it with to a continuum of um, um, values. It depends on the font. Uh, each font might have a different range. So check it before uh, in using it. Uh, I generalize here because I put different uh, typefaces, such as uh, here five, um, five um, variable fonts that are in the Google Fonts connection, connection, uh, collection, so you can use them. Uh, here we have the classic five uh, categories uh, of the font stack. Um, so w this is what we, what the browser is using if you say just a category, a general category. So serif is, uh, when you say in CSS font, and let's see what the CSS does, font family serif, only saying only serif, uh, the browser will pick up this, the, um, the serif that is um, on the machine, of the, the user machine. So we, are, we, in, we don't have a lot of control about that. Whereas, if you do a sans serif, it will pick up another one, the, the default for that browser and that operating system. Uh, a monospace, the same, cursive, don't look at that, fantasy, don't look at that either, it's papyrus. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, but I, I didn't choose it, okay? I'm font agnostic, I didn't choose it, it was the browser, it's not my fault. Okay, if um, I would like to do something better, I can use the UI system font, that's different from the system font, and this is great because the UI system font is the font that is on the machine of the user, but is very, uh, it's a variable font, quite a way. For, for um, I've got um, a Mac, so it's a San Francisco. If you've got a um, Windows, you'll have a Segway UI. And they are fonts very well, very well done. And you see they, ha they are, um, Variable. Uh, they have. They have. San Francisco has a, an axis that is the weight axis, so I can use it, and I, um, it's quite an interesting thing to to, to use the UI system font. Or oh, otherwise, I go with other fonts that I can cho that I choose. Of course, any time I choose a font, uh, I don't choose a font. I, I have to choose a font stack, so I take um, a font, but my CSS should, r r should write, okay, please, uh, browser, take this font that I uploaded, but if you can't upload it, use a sans serif font. It's okay for me. That's what is saying the browser. So, um, as designers, please take this in mind and maybe choose not only one font, but also the, the fallback font, the fallback font category, or, or um, try to reason in a wider <laughs> um, um, environment of, of fonts, or in wider scenarios. I mean, if the font doesn't load, what happens? Okay. And it's, not, it's quite, uh, it can happen quite often. Okay, I'll go back to some um, concepts. Let's see. Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Some definitions. I will start with visibility. And uh, visibility uh, is a prerequisite for legibility and readability. If you don't see uh, you can't read. I mean, you can't read written text. Of course, there are different ways to read. For example, we have screen readers. They, they bring screen, uh, text to voice. 
and so on. We are dealing here with uh, written font, written text, and you have to see it in order to read it, the first prerequisite. Then you have legibility that I would, trans I would um, describe as decoding. That's different from readability. That's more like ease of reading. For example, in Italian, we don't have this distinction. We call it legibilità. It's, it comes from Latin, maybe the same origin of legibility. And it's a, a broad context, where a con, a concept, whereas legibility is, um, mm, we'll see later on, something you have to decode in the, the, the sorry, in, you have to decode. And readability is if you want to read that, it's pleasant to read or not. And in readability, we have also two different concepts. Sorry, because why is that so? Dead? Uh, but you I don't know why. Maybe it's because I have too many. Sorry, I, I started again here. Um, couldn't read it. <laughs> okay. Content readability and typographic readability. We will talk about this because content readability means th the, the kind of test, can I read it because I have studied that subject or not? So, okay, that's different. It's very important for SEO or things, things like that. But start from legibility and starting from that I would say I would uh, quote the web content accessibility guidelines everybody knows about them maybe I think so have you uh, is anybody who haven't heard of them okay great they um, are a product of the W3C and they are uh, in my opinion to be seen in a wider context that is that guidelines are meant for, uh, for us, um, that we, um, for people who does web content. Whereas uh, there are other um, guidelines for user agent, producer, and authoring tool producers. Because readability is a complex thing, things, <laughs> thing that must be seen uh, in, from different point of view. It's not only web content. We can do our best, but it's not enough. Uh, for example, when the browsers um, brought the possibility to um, an, um, to make the font bigger, uh, or at least to zoom the page, that was great, and it was on the part of the user agent and not the web content um, people. Okay, I will have a look to the uh, on uh, with regard to text and readability. So a smaller part of uh, the, the subject. Maybe you know that there are three conf uh, conformity levels in the WCAG. Um, more A's mean, means, means more requirements. We have, they have a four group in which they divide their 13 guidelines. So we have perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. So I, I, this is not a workshop on that, but I will try to pick up some concepts from that. Uh, these are the 13 guidelines, and we'll, uh, we'll see something about distinguishable and readable. There's so also something interesting in adaptable and navigable, but we won't talk about that. And uh, we will have I will have a look to those um, success criteria. Okay, this is more or less what I would like to analyze. Um, perceivable, distinguishable. We the first th two um, criteria that I, um, success criteria I would say is, uh, are important for readability are this thing or maybe they used to be important. They say, don't use image of text in, on the web. It used to be uh, in the past quite a lot. 
uh, they said, don't use it because otherwise uh, the screen reader won't read the content. Maybe <laughs> we are now in a different period, in a different era. Now it's possible to read the content, so I don't know if it's uh, uh, interesting or not. Anyway, uh, this a uh, good recommendation not to use. I, I, I have the text here, but uh, I won't go through that. <laughs> we'll summarize, don't use images of text unless you can't do otherwise because otherwise it's difficult to, for example, with the retina display, we have an image uh, that can't be yeah, um, uh, scaled, um, and so it becomes unreadable, pixelated, and, and so it's better not to use it for, for text. Okay, not, not uh, very good. Uh, I mean, we already do that most of the time. Then we have this big, big question about the contrast. Um, the contrast uh, has two levels of conformity that basically change the values of that. Uh, again, I won't let you read it because it's very long, but I will summarize it a bit with this um, table where we have two levels of conformities, and they make this thing, uh, distinction between regular text and large text. And they say we, have, we must have a, a minimum contrast ratio, the contrast ratio of the color of the text uh, with respect to the color of the background. Okay. And so they have different levels, and they introduce this concept, large text, and I'm curious about that large text, what do you mean? What, they, what do they mean by text? No? Large text, what is it? That's how they define large text. Okay, 18 point, or if the text is bold, is 14 point for Latin text, uh, and not to talk about uh, the languages that, that, has, that have um, ideograms like uh, Ch Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. Okay, let's go to the first consideration. Point, points were meant to be uh, for paper, for, for print. It, it's not a question. Uh, they shouldn't be used in, on, on, on screens. On screen we have pixels, you know, the, the graphic department reasons in pixels, not in point. Oh, I mean, <laughs> the old graphic department that was uh, uh, making material for um, print, use that one. But uh, web designers shouldn't use uh, points, but they should use pixels. But do we really know what a pixel is? Are you sure? We used to know, we used to, to know what they was. They, um, some times ago, we had some uh, screens and the pixel was a hardware, pic hardware pixel, the, the, the smallest uh, point uh, a screen could um, show. But it's no more the case because we have everywhere <laughs> virtual pixels that are based on the reference pixels. So old, sc old screens, new screens. And what is the origin of the virtual pixel? Remember the iPhone 3? Okay, maybe. And there was a point when on the market uh, arrived the iPhone 4. The, apparently they were <laughs> very similar. They, were, they had the same dimensions, same screen dimensions, but different resolution. So what happens here was that uh, each side uh, of the screen uh, doubled the number of pixels. Okay, great for, for images, but uh, consider uh, reading a, a website uh, that had the font in pixels. Okay, so the pixels, and that was, <laughs> there were a lot at those times. Text in pixels, th 32 pixels, for example, would have been seen on the other screen uh, half the size. So they had to introduce 
not, not only the physical pixel, but the virtual pixel. And the CSS specification had to, to be um, uh, changed and so upgraded, let's say so. And this is a nice definition of a pixel, the CSS pixels, that is an angle. It's a visual angle with uh, zero dot, uh, zero degrees level. Okay. Um, just to have you an idea of what they mean, it's not easy, I'll try. I, I used DALI to, 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 to figure out an image maybe, but I don't know if it helps. Um, a ref they introduced this concept that it's the reference pixel that is uh, a visual angle of one pixel on a device with a device pixel density of 96 dpi as an old, imagine an old uh, screen, 96 dpi as resolution, at uh, one arm of distance. Okay, and that conditions, that's the pixel, okay. It's an angle to see that, pic, uh, that um, point. So it's uh, just a, a convention. But, uh, and this concept of angle is a bit difficult to grasp, but it's very, very important. And is imagine you have two A's at the same, um, if you want to have it in the same perception of um, dimensions, if something is uh, near and something is far from, from your eye, you have to let the, the far be uh, larger, taller. Uh, so you have this perception of the same dimensions. And there's this famous uh, picture uh, by Oliver uh, Reichenstein, that's uh, from 2012, that says, so, <laughs> it, mm, this is a sort of introduction of the responsive web typography. Well, maybe, uh, at least uh, uh, me, at the beginning, I thought it was, we used to make a font smaller on, uh, on, a, on a smartphone because we thought that, uh, I thought it was uh, the smaller screen that brought that, but it's not a question of the screen, um, but it's a question of distance of reading. So if you have something near, you have a different angle, of, uh, so you need to, you, um, to have a, s a smaller font. Responsive web typography, such as, uh, that's what we have been, at the beginning it was this, so uh, for example on uh, mobile and uh, uh, an iPad, a tablet, I don't know, is smaller than on a desktop because of the distance. Now we have fluid typography, okay, we have, uh, but that's a starting point. Let's go back to the um, accessibility guidelines. And, okay, point or pixel. Now we have some um, elements to convert one to the other. That's math, I will, uh, it's too late to, to go <laughs> in, the, in the day to, to go, but we can uh, have something, a conversion. So uh, on print we have what we have, 12 points, are roughly 16 pixels on, the pic on uh, a screen. We can convert, so the values of the uh, web content uh, accessibility guidelines and large text in point uh, might correspond to something like 24 pixels or 19 pixels if the, the text is bold. So we, we are able to calculate the contrast ratio that is um, required. Okay, maybe we have tools for that, okay? But I wanted to let you know the, the theory behind. Uh, okay, now we, have, we know what to do, but but in the specification they said, okay, points and also M's or percentages, other measures. We convert it to pixels, otherwise we couldn't talk with our graphic department. Okay, because it's really difficult <laughs> to understand that. 
how poor, poor developers, they have to translate pixels into what? They don't know what, <laughs> what it is. So let's help developers in this case. And, uh, and the users as well, because we are not going to use pixels in production for text. That's not a good idea. Let's see, brief, very briefly, the different unit, units of measurement we have in CSS. We have some uh, that comes from print, you know, meet centimeters, meet millimeters, inches, point and picas are typically uh, typographic um, units, and then we have pixels that are for screen, okay? That's what we have. Then we have percentage, we can use percentage and it can be for print or for screen, uh, it's neutral. And then we have interesting typographic um, units that are M, RAM, X and CH. Uh, just to... Um, the, the more... In, um, everybody is knowing maybe M and RAM. RAM is the root element and M is uh, relative to the font size of the um, parent. And it takes his name by the M the, mm, of the font. We, we'll see in practice later on. RAM is the root element. Then we have X and CH that depend on the font. The font X is meant to be the height of a X, of the um, lowercase x of that font, and the CH is the width of the zero character uh, in that font, the changes with the fonts. So the last two are dependent of the particular font, they change with the font. In the playground we can try and uh, we, we can experience that difference. Then we have some other new, <laughs> some uh, newer, new, more new than others, and um, they are relative units uh, that are basically linked to the viewport, the first, and the last one for the CSS uh, lovers in the room, well, the, they are marvelous because they depend on the content of the single content that has, um, we can measure the content of a single element of the CSS. We, so that's very um, revolutionary. Mm. So why I said, I said that uh, we are not going to use pixels? Because there's another <laughs> uh, web content usability guidance that says that uh, we need to uh, let people resize text. And uh, it must be resized uh, up to 200%. Okay, how can we do that? Uh, common plus or control plus uh, more times, and we have the zoom, we zoom uh, all the page. But that's not enough. We have two different um, ways to zoom the text. The screen zoom, Sorry, that's Italian because my brother is Italian and my, I couldn't translate it. Uh, um, but we have two ways of um, making this zoom of text. One is a screen zoom and you reach it by uh, visualize and um, I don't know how it is in English. Uh, anyway, it's command plus or control plus, okay. The other one is a preference in the browser. This is Chrome, and any browser has different uh, way, but basically they, all the, they do is um, let the, the user select a different size of the text for, for every um, website they visit. So uh, that's a nice thing because if uh, I need uh, a, a wide, um, taller, uh, larger font, um, 
I do it and, uh, as a user. But the designer shouldn't override this uh, uh, choice by the user. And it's quite common, <laughs> very, very common. Uh, a lot of designers go, um, the, sorry, developers in this case, they go and put um, the size of the font size, the font size of the root element, the HTML element, in pixels. And this is um, what makes the, um, the text uh, not resizable by the user preferences. So remember that, don't use it at the root level. Maybe we can see examples l later on, but uh, I'll leave you with this um, recommendation. This is uh, code ben. I'll leave it in the slides. In the slides, uh, you can try it, and that's uh, what the what it does. You can test it. Let's go back also to the the other recommendations. One other recommendation is the concept of reflow. So it, it's quite complex also, this one. But basically, is it, it introduces the responsive web design, that uh, necessi necessity. Then we have other two interesting um, guidelines. One is for level three of conformity, with quite a lot. But I like it because it, it does a lot of um, recommendations. For example, it says, let the user select the, font, uh, the foreground and background colors. That's important for a lot of people. So don't over, um, overwrite. It's like the, um, the thing I said before, that the pixels. As, um, in your CSS, you have to, to let, uh, to consider the preferences of the users. That's basically the, the, the important point. Then you have one interesting, interesting consideration, and that is uh, this, the width, no more than 80 characters in the Latin alphabet, or 40 with ideograms. No, don't justify text, that uh, we see uh, later on. The line spacing, it's important, the space between the lines and uh, the possibility to resize the taxi we saw before. Okay, interesting uh, things to, to, to say. Then we have text spacing level A. This helps readability as well. So the line height, the spacing uh, between uh, one paragraph and another, or the letter spacing, the space between the, la the, the, let the, the characters, or the word spacing, the, 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 the space between the words, these are all CSS properties that we can use. Or are some sliders we have in our graphic uh, app. But be careful, for example, if you space and if you use ligatures, a characteristic of a font, the F and I, the I one character, because uh, the, the, the typographer uh, made a particular glyph in order to um, have it nice, but if you have both combined, uh, something won't, uh, won't work, you see. So everybody is in, everything is in interconnected. And then another thing very important that the uh, recommendations um, have is the language of a page. Always put the information of the language of the page because this uh, it's, it's easy to do it in HTML. Uh, no HTML here. Um, the language at the beginning of in the root element, okay. And this uh, has consequences. For, exam for example, with a hyphenation. Uh, it, hyphenation is different from one language to another. So the browser will, um, will behave differently according uh, with respect to the language that is declared. So here, HTML and um, 
hyphenation, CSS, by CSS, and browser, and a lot of things can uh, go together. You see. Uh, yes, this was an example. You see, uh, maybe there's uh, a link as well. Uh, and another important uh, thing was the reading level. Uh, they recommend to use a, a simple language that has um, to be understood by, a pe by people with a lower second secondary education level. Okay, that's a concept of readability in one of the two meaning we, we saw before, so the content readability. Okay. But let's go to the difference made between legibility and readability. Legibility, answer to the question, can you read it? This is nice definition by um, um, Stephen Coase. And it has to do with the anatomy of the characters or with that particular font. We have a, a, a terminology that typographers use and I recommend you to start um, understand this terminology because it helps you to um, analyze the font you are going to use. There are a lot of things important here. And for example, understanding that the font size is um, um, different from what you really see. And this difference has uh, historical reasons because of the, the, the dimension of the font was uh, linked to the, the, the metal type. And so when we use um, CSS and we don't know this historical reason, we cannot understand why we cannot align things well. So this is, this is still a, a big problem in uh, the typography or with CSS. But legibility has to do with, um, um, the, with the types, with the different typefaces. And have a look. Here we have ambiguous forms. Can we tell if it's a zero or an O or an, an uppercase um, O? S in some fonts it's easier, in some other is not. Or can we tell if it's a nine or a G? Or is it a one, an L, an, uh, I, an I, an uh, uppercase I? So e if you are mean, and uh, you want to, to, to make, um, I don't know, a form when your user has to put uh, a password, use a very ambiguous <laughs> font, so the, they will hate you. Um, another uh, thing is also, uh, for example, the, you see the R and N, that might be um, taken for an M. This is a joke for typographers. Camming, it's for caring, it's for typographers. Let's go on. Another thing is the rhythm and letter spacing. Take this letter, for example. Minimum is quite a good example of, you see, the rhythm, how it changes. Uh, some are more regular than others. And there are also some other potential ambiguous shapes. For example, a sans serif font uh, often has B, D, P, and Q, and Q uh, that are the same uh, shape um, reflected or upside down. And that's said to be a very big problem for dyslexic people. Some other, some typographers say that's not the case. That's a problem for everybody. But <laughs> if, you, if you feel like that, you can use a serif font. And so you, learn, you won't have that problem because each um, uh, glyph is different in this case. It's here you can have some. Because uh, some people say that uh, dyslexia people um, tend to 
uh, flip the, the, some letters. That's why this is going to be a problem for them. But some others are not, don't agree uh, with, with that. I don't know, and I have an answer. What about readability again? Our readability, the content readability we saw before, we answer the to the question, can you understand this text? Which level of scholarization you have? So, whereas the typographic readability answers to the question, would you like to read this text? Can we do something in order to let you uh, read it? And it has to do with the user experience. Uh, I call it the reader, uh, the reading, the reader experience. Uh, we have customer experience, user things. So we, we, we we might have also the reader experience. Okay, and that's the typographic readability. But how do we read? That's the point. We have some technical aspects. We have a physical side of reading. We use the eye, two eyes generally, and we have we use our brain. They are connected. And what we do with this, not so scientific, just to give you uh, an idea of um, the processes involved. We have m high movements, mm, fixations. So we fix, we m have focus on only few letters, few characters, and then we jump uh, with a socket to another few letters. And we don't read uh, some letters in between. More or less the same we do it we'll do we'll do win with the vertical rhythm. This is quite a nice uh, representation of these movements it, because it's not a jump, the socket, it's a very fast movement and the fixation might be longer, shorter, wider or shorter. So this is represented with a different um, <laughs> radius of these um, circles by Sophie Bayer, that's an expert of readability. And we have this process of um, the acuity of foveal vision, so it's another representation. <laughs> um, we have only few letters that are at focus uh, in a time, and that's why, it's that's how it comes. It comes from the back of the retina, we have these two parts, the macula and the fovea, the fovea is the, uh, very rich of terminations, so that's the one that uh, has mm, the letters make um, have in focus those characters, and the macula is can see but not so well. And as we see, the, the image is upside down. What we can uh, think is that uh, in each fixation we. Um, have a few letters at focus and the other are not. Uh, we can read it, but not so well. And so what we re when we read, we do um, these jumps and uh, we, uh, very, it, there's a lot of math here. The visual angle, th so the distance, the size of the, of, of the font, the, the spacing, all these things, we have some math, and we have uh, some um, in a, I don't know a line of 65 characters. We'll have more or less seven fixations per line, and six movements, uh, saccading movements. And after that, uh, after our eye has um, um, seen the, the things, we have the mental processes. So. Uh, we have a stimulus, a word, for example. We've detected some letters. We can combine, maybe it's what happens uh, in our brain. And we combine things. It's not only what we see, but we also we see the words. We know the words. We try, we guess, something the easiest way in order to understand. That's our brain more or less uh, works. And this explains one reason, this last thing of the word decoding, explains why typographer says that it's easier to read small um, letters um, um, instead of capital letters. A word, because you can recognize the, f the shape of the word. It's 
sort of ideogram. You recognize, you've seen it before, you don't read it, you recognize it. So you, the more you read, the, more, uh, you, the faster you read it. And it also, um, it's also uh, linked to the typeface. She's a typeface designer and a uh, very famous quotation, we read best what we read most. So it depends uh, which font, uh, in which font do you read best. I don't know, maybe you have a font you know well and you read uh, fast because of that. And another concept important is what do we read? Text is not uh, all the same. We have long form reading. We have in, uh, the one of novels or technical text. We have interlude reading. Uh, for example, when we have something on the social media, we read it, but not. Uh, it's not. It's different. You have experience, of course. And some glanceable reading is when, uh, for example, you you look at a uh, sign, uh, three directions, or on the web, for example, you have a digital menu. So you, you are going to read when you need it. And so on the web, for example, we have the body text, uh, the display text, a functional text, for example. And uh, they have different functions. So we style it differently. So maybe you know, one font is good for one reason and not for, the, uh, for another. One way of styling is for one reason or for, for, not, for, for another, not for the other. And uh, it, on the typeset, so we have to match this um, different um, um, type of text to the type of readings. Uh, and we have to adapt our typesetting, uh, thinking about that. Let's see now a bit uh, more on the um, example um, that we made before. Okay. So you might recognize the, um, the factors. Let's see, for example, the hyphenation and the justification. This is a classical. Um, okay, we want to justify a text. Le let's put it a bit uh, bigger. Font size a bit bigger. Let's justify, mm, where is it, uh, here, justify. Well, generally, let's do it a bit shorter as the line has, otherwise we don't see the problem. This is quite good, actually. Um, line, uh, where is it? Line height, one side. Line length. You see here, we have what typographers call it, call rivers. This rivers, this and they are not nice. So you generally don't use justification, especially on small columns. And in if you do it, you have to hyphenate. Maybe hyphenate. So you see it's better because you, um, you cut some words and so you have less rivers. Of course, if you hyphenate in your HTML, you have to have the correct language. So everything is um, linked. Otherwise, you'll end up with a very poor hyphenation that's very inconvenient because it looks like uh, um, a big typo. Um, um, other things that I would like to show you is the unit of measurement. Let's see, uh, let's put it alignment left, no hyphenate. Uh, so
So let's put a uh, font size that will be bigger and the la line length be longer. I said 47. 47 of what? Of CH. CH character is the unit um, that counts the, the, the number of characters. So, for example, if I change the font, this is a serif, let me put a sans serif, you see it has a different length because it counts the number of characters, CH. So, for example, if you want to be sure that you have a certain number of current characters, or a maximum number of characters per line, you can use CH. Or you can either use M's, but M's is the same concept, let's say, it's linked to the, the typeface, but it's double, more or less the double of the CH. For example, if we have, uh, let, let's start from CH, we'd like to have 45 length, uh, 45. Okay, with the M, it should be half that dimensions in order to have the same, uh, more or less the same length. C, H, and M, different value. You can try and maybe familiarize with this. Or if you use REM, REM, at the root M, the root, so this is fixed. And it's a good thing to, if you are going to have a hierarchy, a hierarchy in, in your, um, um, uh, for example, uh, H1, H2, uh, H3s, it's a good idea to have REM. So you have something that is always at the same um, reference. Re um, they won't change. Whereas if you use M's, they depend on the container. It's, um, it's more like using percentages. Another thing Im very important is the um, line height. Where is it? Uh, line height here. Where line height, uh, I put a minimum of one and a maximum of two. It's basically what in, in an app, in Figma, maybe other app, you will find it maybe in percentages to have this. Or otherwise you have some, in, in, a, lot in, of, um, in a lot of apps, you find it or linked to a value or to a percentage. It's the same concept. Here we talk about a CSS, but we might have it in an app differently. But one is fixed. For example, you, you, if you put it, um, let's do it like, uh, as an example, no, we cannot do it here because I didn't allow to use the pixels as um, font size because the font size. But I uh, let you uh, show you. I'll, uh, font size is here. I do one thing, so I. I Sorry, just a second. Mm. So I see better here. Uh, also here. One second here. Don't. Um. Okay. So here. font size line line okay 
if we show us this. I put the line height in the code pen um, being just a number without a unit. That means as it's um, relative, it's not fixed. If I do it um, fixed, let's say line height 1.6, uh, no, let's say uh, the font size is uh, 1.4m. Let's say that we do it uh, 20 pixels. So this, uh, you see, if I change the font size no, no, it didn't. Hello, no, no, let's go uh, just a second I tried to do it like this font size uh, 20 pixel is the line height fixed line height and the font size at same pixels is 20 pixels okay if I change the font size to I don't know, 30 pixel that's I left the line height fixed so it doesn't scale doesn't adapt whereas if I um, keep the font size I don't at Let's say one. It's really, small. but I change. Uh, I change the font size at that point. No problem. You see, it's it adapts. So, uh, and that's the same with the graphic um, app as well. Okay. So, it line height should be something that is um, mm, not fixed. And what we can have the interesting um, font variant. Have you got any questions? Some, some questions, maybe? Uh, I can go on, on another concept. That is, let's see, uh, font size, line height. Another thing that the web content um, accessibility guidance said was you can use the letter spacing, the word spacing, but be careful. If you do it, it's just for very short uh, measures, um, tiny, tiny um, adjustments. Another thing they say uh, is you can add a margin button to each paragraph. Maybe, maybe not. Depends. Margin button, for example, between paragraphs. You see, might help, might not help. Other uh, uses um, the indentation of the first um, letters. So techniques you can use to uh, divide paragraphs and let them be more readable. Or let's see. Wait. Another important thing that I would like to stress is the font synthesis: yes or no. What is allowed to be and what is not. And it's uh, important to be uh, to have awareness about that. Font synthesis is what the browser does to a font. For example, when we have uh, we want, uh, let's pick a font that is a, a monospace. Hmm. I'm not sure if it works, but let's see. A monospace, and I said, oh, I want it in uh, italic. But that font doesn't have italic. You see it uh, slanted because of the browser. It's the browser that says, okay, I'll make it. But that's a typographic crime. Okay. 
I watch you. Don't do it. I mean, be, ca be aware of if mm, the font has uh, italic, and so you can use it. Otherwise, please don't use it. Th or take another font, or uh, don't use it. Don't let the browser do it. There's a CSS uh, property that says, OK, don't do it. Uh, it says none. Don't do it. This font does have an italic, because it's the font that um, has both. Let's say, because it's not, uh, I don't know which one. I, this one has the italic. No, maybe not. It doesn't have the italic. The papyrus doesn't have any, any use. Any use. The, the papyrus doesn't have italic. So I want to do a, the synthesis of the style, or both. The, phone, the, <laughs> the browser doesn't uh, do the synthesis of that one, of the fantasy, of the car. Uh, it, it might be reasonable because a fantasy is very, it's a category very different, very mm, crazy category. So the browser says, Mom, I won't try to, to make a, a, a fake, a faux, they call it in, in French, the, a faux, bold, faux italic. And the synthesis the browser can do is both uh, is with regards to italic uh, the w um, the weight, quindi bold or not bold, and the small caps. Small caps. Let's take a take a different. Uh, so we have a serif. Small caps. Small caps. I show you another thing that is not nice. The small caps is when you have um, this little, uh, the another form of um, uh, up lowercase letters, but with the shape of a uppercase letters, with the same height of a lowercase letters, but the proper small caps should be designed in the in in the font, and uh, you l might recognize it. Let's see with another one, sans serif. Here is, let's do it, the font weight, so, and font size better. The point is that the stroke of an N is not the same dimension of the stroke of the O. They should have the same stroke in order to be proper small caps. Otherwise, is uh, a synthesis. None. You see, don't do it. It doesn't have it. If you choose a font that has a small caps in it, y y y um, if, you, if you don't let the browser do it, it's the font that does. <laughs> For example, if you go to um, the collection Google Fonts, I show you one thing. <laughs> okay, yeah, here we are. Google Fonts. Um, if you search for, let's say, small, no, SG, SG, you have, uh, for example, Emantic SG stands uh, is Emantic small caps. Uh, I say that this one is the new Comic Sans, but anyway, it, it has the same mood. <laughs> but apart from that, um, this is a proper small caps font. So uh, you can use the small caps with this one. So you have to. to to choose the right font if you want the small caps, it's not easy. Otherwise, it's it's better not to use it, for, in my opinion, but it depends. Small caps. Um, okay. Okay, on Figma, just to show you, I, let's see if I see. 
here on the other hand because uh, windows view um, page here boom I cannot resize it uh, view 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 here uh, let's see like that I show you uh, first frame one For example, here I used um, in Consolata, it's in a variable font, and has um, from, I don't know, one year maybe, in Figma we have the possibility to use properly the uh, variable fonts. And you'll find it in, um, uh, what is it? For, for example, this sample font, I want to change the characteristics of the variable. And here you see we have two axes of variations, weight and width. But maybe I haven't selected yet. Okay, what is it? Crash. Poor, poor, okay, okay, let's try. And if you take another example, let's see if we have it here or here. Well, um, this, th these uh, adjustments are very difficult to, to show in a demonstration like that because they are very subtle and so you have to judge when you have it in the context you are going to use it. That's very important to remember. That's why I said try it with the, with the iPhone, with the smartphone, with, with different conditions. Um, and you'll find what you can, um, you'll find the better um, setting you think it is but that might be not the better for somebody else, actually. So as designer developers, we can do a part, but maybe let, anyway, the, the user um, adjust. For example, if, they, uh, um, if the user adjusts the, um, the brightness of the screen, it changes quite a lot. I show you some other things here. Yeah, I go to... Okay, this concept here. <coughs> one nice, uh, one important concept, uh, I think that um, the most important is to understand that the, um, the relation the relationship between three aspects of the paragraph type setting that are the paragraph with the font size and the line height. If you change one of them, you should adapt the others. And generally that's not done. We've seen it before, the um, relation between font size and line height, at least with uh, uh, the measures, different measures. But the paragraph width is the third element. And uh, um, some people with a lot of knowledge on typography has said the same thing. This is a metaphor by um, Richard Rattel. It's readability is like a stool of three legs. So you have to have a balance between the th three in order to obtain readability. I like most uh, a lot of this uh, metaphor, and I like also this metaphor. It's just the same. It's the triangular, uh, equilateral triangular triangle, 
the equilateral triangle of a perfect paragraph by Matei Latin. And it, mm, it says the same thing in uh, CSS words in CSS instead of uh, typographic words because font size, is, I don't know, font dimension or line height is called uh, leading in, um, in typography. Line length is the line length <laughs> measure in typography sometimes. And I'll tell you this other thing that is linked to the line length and vision. And this um, comes from a typographer, this re reason. The reason meant comes from a typographer, it's called Bruno Mag. And it's, I, I found it really um, uh, interesting. So he says that, um, sorry, we have seven to nine characters in a fixation of a text at about 30 centimeters which if, uh, with a font between nine and 11 points. So a book, when we read a book, nine, 11 points, points um, on paper, and 30 centimeters, seven to nine characters in a fixation. That's what they measured, more or less. Okay. Then, uh, we, with uh, a line length of 30, 65 characters, we have seven um, move fi um, fixations per line, six movements, six uh, saccading movements. Okay, with these numbers, we end up with a minimum of characters per line of 56, 55, let's say, to a maximum of 65. F so, in that condition, uh, what we generally read is uh, a line of 55 to 66 characters is the optimum. And that's what, basically, typography has said for 500 uh, years. So that measure, that measure comes from the way we see. <laughs> that's, uh, for me, it's astonishing, actually. And you see that in uh, a lot of books, so we have this measure recommended. This is the sacred boot <laughs> book of typography. And they say, OK, 66 characters per line is optimal. Um, so it comes from, wha from how we see. And I'll tell you to this audience, because we make websites, and there, uh, no, no, we don't have websites with 65 characters, 66 characters. We, we generally don't have it. They are too long, those lines are too long. Or make, either make the, the font bigger or shorten your, uh, your line. And it's plenty of websites that have this problem. Um, Wikipedia has worked on, <laughs> on that. And it depends on the country. Uh, so in English, they have um, uh, started a shorter line, so to fix a line. Uh, because you know that it's liquid, uh, how it is now nowadays, uh, as and how it has been for a long time. So that's why it's important to, um, to set a measure. Another thing that I would like to let you um, um, consider is what, what I said before, the different font size. When we measure a font size, it depends on the font because of historical reasons. So what is 16 pixels for, I don't know, this is font, it's called Balboa, it's different from the 16 pixels of the Times New Roman. They have different, uh, and, and what is the font size? The si uh, font size is the container that was um, the metal, the metal um, uh, where the metal type was was put. So that's basically different. So when you, for um, practically, if you have a project, you select a font for that project, uh, and then you work on uh, the, pic the the measure of your um, the font size. Well, if you change the the font later on, 
you have to rethink about that. You can use not absolute measures, but relative, it will help, but anyway, you have to check and, and see if it still works uh, reasonably. And that's also a big uh, question on font loading, because if the font doesn't load, it, the, the browser loads the, the fallback font, and they have different measures, different um, uh, sizes, a property in CSS is coming, it's not uh, really ready, but uh, we'll, um, we'll solve this problem soon, we hope so. With regard to what variable fonts, um, okay, if a font, a variable font is um, a, um, is one font instead of different fonts. I mean, one file instead of different files. If you had to um, upload all those uh, files of static fonts, you had nine files, for example, and here you have one file with the same mm, results, but, uh, and all the intermediate uh, shapes you can have. For example, this is uh, a font with two uh, dimensions. One is the width, two axes of variation, width and uh, width and weight, two axes. Maybe you know in uh, a variable font might have a lot of axes of variations. There are five um, axes that are um, considered registered, so they are the most common. But you can put uh, a type designer can put uh, whatever they want, so they can have um, axes of variation of different types. Um, the useful axes for readability, uh, at that end, uh, you can uh, technically um, um, see having quite a lot of uh, fonts, variable fonts, are the weight axis. Uh, most of the, the fonts on uh, Google font that are variables has have this uh, axis. There might be the weight or the width also, or those two are important, but this one is uh, even better. <laughs> And it's the optical size. I try to describe it because it's, uh, it might be um, undervalued, <laughs> but it's really, really important. If a font uh, has the optical size um, axis of variation, means that uh, it automatically changes with regard to the font size. It's um, useful in certain type of fonts, the fonts that have, that have difference of strokes. You see, this, this one has a very thin stroke and a very uh, bold stroke. Mm -hmm. The optical size make it different if it is small or big. Because if you take this shape, and you put it small, you won't see this line. So it won't be readable. So high contrast web fonts, such as this one with contrast of strokes, uh, um, might be used on the web if they have that characteristic, the optical size. And the browser will take uh, the the proper uh, shape for that particular um, measure font size. So it means that basically the, all the job has been made by the typographer and not from the designer or uh, developer. Okay. This is very nice. Okay, and uh, think of that uh, font pairing, you know, generally a designer takes um, a uh, two kind of typefaces, one for the, the headers and one for the body copy. But 
you can have in one font uh, something that is uh, um, already ready <laughs> is ready for for uh, being very big or very small. So you have a sort of type pairing inside the font. And you can have, you can do a lot of fine tuning. You see, if you had the static fonts, uh, you can have a continuum with variable fonts. Another interesting axis is the grade axis. It's not official, but I uh, registered, I, I would register it if I could. And it's uh, very e interesting for uh, um, web design because it, it slightly increase, it, it makes a character bolder without reflowing uh, the page. Whereas if you have uh, bold in general, generally you, ha for example, let's say we have a button that is uh, with a thin uh, font weight, we want to, to have a, uh, an effect of over or lower and have it bolder. The character will, uh, will grow in width. That's not what we want. If we, if we deal with this axis, the grade axis, we won't have that problem. So that's great. And this is very um, convenient also for uh, trying to convert a um, light mode in a dark mode because you have uh, optical um, uh, aspects in which you, you won't see the difference here, actually, because of the light, the distance, whatever. You can try it, but if you slightly correct this grade, the Robotoflex has the grade, uh, the grade axis, and let um, the dark mode be a bit um, um, with a less grade uh, value and have the same um, effect. Uh, optical corrections, let's say so. Uh, and there are also web fonts that um, try to be legible. That's another <laughs> big, big topic. Uh, this is a nice experiment that is uh, also a variable fonts and is on Google Fonts. You can find it there. The research on readability is going very fast and it's um, and I think that we'll, uh, we'll see a lot of uh, improvements in um, um, soon. A lot of big companies have been uh, um, interested in that and they have starting to do t um, inter um, studies from different uh, interdisciplinary uh, with an inter interdisciplinary approach and so I think we'll see a lot of results on that. Uh, this is project by Readability Matters. It's more or less what we, we did bef uh, today with uh, the playground. This is, this has less characteristics, less properties. For me, it, they weren't enough to, to set the power. That's why I, <laughs> I used uh, some other because on CSS it's possible to do that. Uh, I, I, but what they say uh, at Readability Matters is everybody has have his, um, their own way of um, of uh, optimizing for readability. So you have to try it, and because it's difficult to f to, to do that, you have to. Uh, to to, to, to know what is good for you, they are putting some machine learning on that and trying to, to, um, to find that some clusters in order to have more or less different styles. So which style is better for you? And they are going to reach uh, some results soon, I guess. Uh, some other groups are working on that, the readability group, you see that. And they, in this group, that's Bruno Mag uh, that I quoted before, um, they also take in consideration the branding, so the emotional uh, part of uh, typography. And that's important too. It's not only uh, something that you want to read, but some other values. Um, the last experiment I will show you 
It's this bionic reading, uh, maybe you've seen it. It's based on this concept of, <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm smiling because of you. Um, because they, they are uh, mimic the fixation and saccadic movements we, we do. And so you have this interesting thing, you can adjust some uh, fixation, duration, length, various parameters, but not only those parameters, some other lightness, line width, line space, we are more or less where we, um, where we were today with the same uh, concepts. Then, uh, I would say thank you for your attention. Let me introduce let um, me thank the Yoast uh, Diversity Fund uh, that had me to my, with my trip to, to Greece. If you are interested, uh, have a look to this uh, nice initiative. And thank you. If you have answer, uh, questions, I will answer at your questions. Yes, yes, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll publish, so I'll, I'll let you have it on. Um, just a second. Hello. You know, you said the um, font size is not always the font size. Mm -hmm. How does that affect accessibility? accessibility, so let's say the minimum is 19 pixels, yeah? But you select a font that actually isn't 19 pixels high, even though it's 19 pixels when you set it in the CSS. Am I correct in understanding the font height? Uh, in the concept you showed, so you had the font like this, but the font, sorry, that was the font size, yeah? Mm -hmm. But the font height was actually inside, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that is not 19 pixels, is it? Exactly, that's the problem. Okay, so it would actually fail accessibility. Yes. Okay. Oh well, well, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was confused about. Uh, they say point, but I I don't know exactly. That's the point. That's that's difficult <laughs> to 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 respect those um, guidelines because um, I think they were thought before the web font era, and. You don't. You, they don't deal with these problems. That's why I uh, try to. So should we maybe manually measure yes. the font? Okay. I, I would. Yeah. I would trust, say so. Not trust the actual value. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. I would do like that. I mean, I'll try it and uh, I test it. Maybe you can have uh, as a reference uh, um, the um, the most used uh, fonts on the web. So. You, you say, okay, I have a different font, how can I adjust it? So that might be, and CSS is going to help uh, soon also in that respect. Okay, are there any other questions? This might be a stretch, but I'm trying. I'm making an Apple Watch app that displays the weather. Um, and I find it very hard to optimize the text for this ultra small screen. Um, it's a stretch, but any tips? <laughs> Look for a very good font. You are going to, to pr probably you're going to buy it because um, if, if you're going with um, uh, open, for, uh, open source fonts, you might have very good fonts because they mm, they came open mm, open because of a company big company open uh, Roboto Flex is a, a, a very very nice font and it's there by Google because and they they open it but it, there's a lot of studies um, behind uh, a lot of mm, fonts are made specifically for, 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 for a purpose. So 
you, you might even work with, uh, if it's a big problem, you might consider working with a typographer and, uh, and have a, a proper uh, font for your uh, needs. That might be a high level uh, solution. <laughs> Other questions? Take your chance. I give you some other um, tips on uh, variable fonts. Maybe you know Axis Praxis. To, uh, there are playgrounds to understand uh, how they work. Or what do I have here? Well, if you are you want to discover. Some characteristics of variable fonts. Uh, this is the vufonts.com um, website is very rich of new fonts, and they are mixed. Y here you will clearly see that there are some fonts that are uh, open source and they are good, and some others that are uh, uh, paid fonts that are good as well. Um, one interesting so website I would recommend is uh, this site uh, with a very <laughs> strange name, Wakamai Fondu. Um, this is a precious, precious tool. Uh, you have uh, downloaded a font you and uh, you'll um, drag it into that uh, circle and you'll, uh, you'll have a description of what the font can do and examples. Maybe i show you an example because it's really interesting. Let's see if I can, ah yeah. Um, just a second. So if you are going to upload your font uh, with font face on the website, you, uh, yeah, it's extremely useful. Um, and let's see if I can find a font somewhere. Uh, no, I don't want to register my. Uh, let's see if it's in, it's in you have. We have one here to drop it there. Pick a font. Uh, let's take. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Let's take a robot of Lex. If I find, I know he doesn't have it here. Let's take another one. Let's take uh, Inconsolata. Uh, another thing I would stress is the the kind. Um, this world you have. Latin, Latin extended, uh, Vietnamese, they are the group of glyphs that the, that font contains. So it depends on what you need. You can have a, a wider uh, group of glyphs or um, a shorter. Let's say in Consolata, you see, uh, imagine you drop your font or you have uh, to check, and you see a lot of information about that font. You have a tester, uh, the language supported, um, if the values of the variable axis, for example, this is the weight axis that goes from 200 till to 900. Uh, another font might have different values. And you have uh, the width value from 50 to 200 in this case, you see, and the um, the name instances of a variable font. So they are preset um, values that the type designer has put into the font that um, correspond correspond uh, to the static fonts more or less. So you have, for example. Um, the various font uh, instances 
that the web designers thought were good choices among those axes. Or you can have, uh, that's a big, big area, but you can have some um, other characteristics that are, for example, here is um, uh, fraction, let's say so, let's see, show on, you see, the numbers changes because of the, that characteristic, frac, and you can uh, play with what you have in the font and what you can do with CSS. That's very fine tuning, but some fonts um, are very rich of these things and you can take advantage of that. One, or for example, numerators. This is not doesn't have so many. Let's try another one. Uh, Francis, this one. This has different um, axes, optical size. That's what I said before. Let's have an example of optical size. Uh, if we have something very this is uh, intended for a small one and this is for a big one in a big one you see the high contrast it's nice you can read it perfect but if you use this font size, as this, um, how do you call it, uh, optical size with a font size, let's say, smaller, uh, font size smaller, uh, yeah, here I have, sorry about that, it's, it was really big. Uh, where is the font size slider? Here is it. Let's do it. Uh, difficult to, do to make some demos, isn't it? Uh, where is it? Font size. Font size. Where is it? Uh, here you are. So, a font size very small with a very high uh, optical size value is going to be very hard to read because the thinner strokes won't be uh, read. This font has a lot of other 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 interesting um, axes, uh, weight or softness, or wonky. This is even I yeah, show you you have a headache, <laughs> maybe. If I, uh, you see a DN, for example, the lowercase n is changing. Uh, and even crazy, uh, this is crazy, but there are other axes that are really, really crazy. Um, for the CSS people here, when you deal with this, you have this property that's font variation settings that is a low level property. That means that if you um, use it later on in your cascade of a CSS with, uh, let's say, uh, only one of these values, not all for each uh, axis, it will override it. So be careful with that. Is not uh, the same attitude that um, behavior that um, the other CSS properties. So, what can my phone do is very in, um, useful. Any other question? Last question. Nobody. Okay. Thank you, Julia, for everything oh, yeah. that you told us. Thank you very much. I have a little. Nice package for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Big applause. Yes. Thank you.